Cinco de Mayo, or the 5th of May in English, is a day of Mexican pride and heritage. Every May 5th, parts of Mexico and many people in the United States take the time to celebrate with parades, family gatherings, parties, folk dancing, mariachi music, Mexican-inspired food, and of course, cerveza and margaritas. Over the years, many Americans have come to assume that it honors the day of Mexico's independence, and that's actually not true. Mexican Independence Day is called Grito de Dolores, or in English, Cry of Dolores, in reference to the battle cry of the Mexican War of Independence from Spain. It is celebrated on September 16th, when Mexico declared its independence back in 1810. So what really happened on the 5th of May, and what are we truly celebrating? Cinco de Mayo commemorates an event that happened some 50 years after Mexico declared its independence. The 19th century was especially brutal for Mexico. After a long and fierce battle to win its independence from Spain, the young nation clashed with the United States from 1846 to 1848, and then a civil war beginning in 1857. These struggles ruined Mexico's economy, and the country had accumulated quite a bit of war debt. By 1861, Mexico had borrowed a lot of money from the United Kingdom, Spain, and France. With no other options, Mexican President Benito Juarez suspended payments on Mexican debt for two years. That news wasn't well received by the European countries. In response, representatives from the Spanish, British, and French governments met in London, and on October 31, 1861, signed a tripartite agreement to intervene in Mexico to recover the unpaid debts. It led the three countries to put pressure on Mexico through naval blockades. Although the British and Spanish governments had more limited plans for intervention, Napoleon was interested in reviving French global ambitions. Not that Napoleon, this guy. Napoleon III, Napoleon Bonaparte's nephew and the Emperor of France. Napoleon III desired to incorporate Mediterranean states and former Spanish and Portuguese colonies in the Americas into a French-led federation. The United States Civil War gave Napoleon III the chance to conquer Mexico without American interference. In December 1861, Spanish troops landed in the port of Veracruz. The French and British followed in early January. The three nations occupied Veracruz. However, the tripartite alliance fell apart by early April 1862 when it became clear that the French had bigger ambitions. The British and Spanish withdrew leaving the French to march alone on Mexico City. Certain that French victory would come swiftly in Mexico, 6,000 French troops set out from Veracruz in May 1862 to attack the city of Puebla on their way to Mexico City. The vastly outnumbered and poorly supplied Mexicans fortified the town and prepared for the French assault. On May 5, 1862, Cinco de Mayo, the French moved to attack. The French commanders were under the impression that the Mexican garrison was much smaller than it really was, and that the people of Puebla would surrender easily rather than risk much damage to their city. The French army tried a direct assault on Puebla, ordering the troops to concentrate on the strongest part of the defense, Guadalupe Fortress, which stood on a hill overlooking the city. Attacking the fortress directly would prove to be a major mistake. The French infantry attacked three times and each time they were repelled by the Mexicans. The battle lasted from daybreak to early evening, and when the French finally retreated, they had lost nearly 500 soldiers. Fewer than 100 Mexicans had been killed in the clash. Although not a major strategic win in the overall war against the French, the Mexican victory, led by Texas-born General Ignacio Zaragoza on Cinco de Mayo, represented a great symbolic victory for the Mexican people and empowered the resistance movement. Because of this great triumph, General Zaragoza is considered a hero and champion of the Battle of Puebla. Since then, the city of Puebla has been renamed Puebla de Zaragoza. So that's it, right? Happy Cinco de Mayo! The day when a ragtag band of Mexican troops managed to defeat what was then the greatest army in the world. David had beaten Goliath, a truly impressive feat. But that's not the end of the story. Now the pride and prestige of France and of Napoleon III was at stake. Reinforcements were sent and the French army in Mexico rose to 28,000 men. 
During the winter, the French prepared for a new campaign in spring 1863. This larger French force laid siege to Puebla beginning on March 16th by encircling the city. The Mexican troops in Puebla held out for almost two months before being forced to surrender. By June, the French emerged victorious and took command of Mexico City. Forced to leave the capital, President Juarez kept himself and his government alive by a long series of retreats that ended at El Paso del Norte, later named Juarez, at the Mexico-U.S. border. With the French army occupying Mexico City, the Second Mexican Empire was established with the support of Napoleon III. The provisional government offered the crown to the Austrian Archduke, Maximilian of Habsburg. Napoleon convinced Maximilian that Mexico had authorized his appointment. In fact, a mockery of a referendum had been staged with not a single vote cast against him. Under the banner of the Second Mexican Empire, Maximilian and his wife Charlotte looked forward to their new home and were led to believe their presence would be welcomed. They set sail for Mexico and received a cold reception from the townspeople. Maximilian I was crowned emperor on April 10, 1864. To the surprise of many, he pushed for laws to prohibit child labor, established a limit to working hours, and abolished a system of land tenancy that virtually amounted to serfdom. Both he and his wife immersed themselves in Mexico's culture. Charlotte changed her name to the Spanish equivalent and was known as Empress Carlota. However, the French were still occupiers, and the Mexicans continued to fight them. By 1866, the Mexicans were winning more battles, and with the end of the Civil War, the United States was finally in a position to help its besieged neighbor. Not wanting to start a war with the United States, France finally withdrew. Maximilian was captured, and in a controversial decision, later executed by firing squad with two of his generals. In June 1867, Benito Juarez reclaimed the presidency and proclaimed the 5th of May, the anniversary of the Battle of Puebla, would be a national holiday. Today, Cinco de Mayo is actually more widely celebrated in the United States than in Mexico. In fact, the world's largest Cinco de Mayo party is held in Los Angeles, California. But the unlikely win for the Mexican militia on May 5th continues to be a source of great pride for the state of Puebla and many Mexican-Americans across the United States. Once again, happy Cinco de Mayo.